Hey, welcome back to Dash Cam Diary of a Disabled with me, Chronically Happy. I still feel like my 10th ribs are out, or 10th rib is out, but this appointment scared us because everything moved so distinctly and my inflammation was a notch down which really shocks the hell out of me. Seriously. Freaking seriously. The inflammation is freaking down today. And you know what the difference was? I actually took the time to actually lay in bed and rest yesterday. And so the inflammation wasn't as bad today. It's really bad in my face though. I still got inflammation. My lymph nodes are actually feeling good for once still um, since I've been off the steroids. So the steroids have gotten my lymph, lymph node system uh, fixed. However, the inflammation cycle is still kind of screwy. Um, I just, I've got to give it time as the steroids continue to get out of my system. Um, gosh, I wish I wasn't going through like slight uh, withdrawal from the um, anxiety meds. I haven't taken any yet this morning. Um, I, my Cairo was so early this morning compared to normal. Uh, it's not so early. It was only a half hour earlier. And I was actually, I can't believe I was on time basically. And I, I still was like five minutes over time just because I had to talk to him. Is lined up for next week, and they're gonna be gone for like another 10 days again next month. Son of a gun! Son of a gun! Uh, I'm gonna have to suffer without my Cairo again for a while and let my body do its thing and uh, let it just settle into whatever spot it settles into. Hopefully, it doesn't cut off my digestion. Process, but it usually always does. I came up with a new idea though for um, my upcoming appointment, and I'm really freaking happy about it. I have a lot less anxiety now, a lot less PTSD because I'm like, you know what, so there is a lot riding on this appointment. However, things have slightly changed with things in my body. I, I know it has. My neck is hurting extra bad now. Um, and I'm going to use the system for every bit that I can can because I was just telling my Cairo this morning, I'm like, you know what? I would love to get a new MRI. And I'm like, wait a minute. That's genius. I just need to talk to my VA doctor and be like, hey, I'm not even going to tell her about my other MRI that I recently had not too long ago. I'm not even going to tell her. But I want to get an MRI. I just need to know where to go. Oh, I need to do research between uh, now and Friday to figure out where I can request an MRI at. Because I don't want to go to Walla Walla VA to go do it. I need to have a specialized protocol on where to get it done. I am not going back to psych or imaging. I am not. They did it last time for me, and then they also did it this last time. I mean, they did it the time correctly before my first tethered cord surgery, and then the second time that they did it, they didn't do it correctly. Um, and that's why I'm unsatisfied with my current MRI results, and that's why I want a new one. I want a second opinion, basically. A second opinion MRI. Um, and I have every right to request that, but a lot of insurance companies don't want to pay for it, especially if I've uh, been radiated recently. They're gonna be like, nah, nah, they don't need to authorize that. And so uh, since I didn't get the last MRI through the VA, why do they even gotta know about it? I don't think they do. I don't think they need to know. And instead of straight up asking my doctor for the referral right off the bat, I'm going to ask for the MRI instead. That is what I want to talk to her about. And 
that way I'm doing the entire workup with the VA so then I can get it approved to go see that doctor and then they don't have to rely on somebody else's uh, some other insurance company some other uh, MRI I want the VA to do it and I want the VA to pay for it they're going to um, but I'm going to tell her uh, my symptoms. I'm going to pretend like I never even had a recent MRI. I'm going to tell her about my fall in December. I'm going to tell her about my first cervical cord surgery. I mean, I'll give her the majority of that information, but I'm just going to willingly put blinders on my own knowledge of, I already have an MRI that tells me about tethered cord, but the VA don't need to know about it. Nope. So I feel like it's going to be a better, easier process doing the entire workup for tethered cord through the VA to prove to them that I need the surgery to send me the referral to give me the justification to go. And I want the MRI done right. So here's my opportunity to do it right and to do it at a better facility that knows the if there is one, I need to figure out where I can get this MRI done that the VA will cover. That is not psych or imaging. Um, I may have to travel for the MRI to someplace far away in Oregon somewhere. I may have to go up to Washington. I just don't know. I don't know what the resources are in Tri-Cities. I really don't want to have to drive back up there, but in order to get what I need, I will. I used to do it all the time, guys. Listen, when I moved and had a, I graduated college, I had my first forestry job in Eastern Oregon. I changed VAs, and that changed my life. Absolutely changed my life. Moving to Eastern Oregon and getting out of the Salem Portland VA system, it absolutely saved my life, and it saved my sanity with the VA. Because the VA in Walla Walla, uh, I had a doctor in Baker City. I worked out of Baker City, Oregon in forestry with the Bureau of Land Management uh, in the year uh, 2018. That was the year I graduated college. So, and then I moved to um, Eastern Oregon. And it was only a temporary seasonal job. So at the end of the summer, they do the layoffs. And I get unemployment for a certain amount of time. But I was getting my VA benefit, so I didn't really need the unemployment. I don't think... Or do, maybe I did. Maybe I did do. Yeah, I think I did do the unemployment for the amount of time that I could have to get reemployed uh, with another forestry job after the layoff with the temporary job. Because sometimes the government is allowed to keep some of the seasonals on longer, um, but they just didn't uh, have the resources or the funding through the BLM that I worked with in Baker City. But. I also wasn't 100% VA service connected disability at the time, so I was still working really hard at fighting the VA to get approved for my uh, Chiari malformation that I had the claim in since uh, 2010, so it was like eight years fighting the VA, and I'll get to more of that story in a minute because I want to finish telling this part of the story. Um, Salem Portland VA refused to diagnose EDS. The rheumatologist I saw through the VA absolutely yelled at me because I had, um, he had, uh, the, the RA doctor through the VA and the Salem Portland VA before I moved. Like, I, 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 in 2018, that was the year. Like, that was the year that, like, things changed got all of my diagnoses in 2018. It was amazing. 
try that VA clinic, which was part of the Walla Walla VA system. So Walla Walla, Washington is like eight miles north of the Oregon-Washington border. It's in Washington, but eight miles south, you're in Oregon. So a lot of people, because Washington doesn't do uh, pop can deposits on soda and stuff, uh, yeah, I use a combination of pop and soda. <laughs> Just for all you guys in different parts of the United States, and I don't know what you call uh, Dr. Pepper, Pepsi, you know, because different locations, different verbs, different terminology. <laughs> I try to remember what all these, uh, what a verb is, an adjective. It's that basic, simple knowledge that we forget as adults exactly what they are. Especially with my dyslexia and my, you know, mix-up brain. <laughs> Mixes things up quite frequently if I don't look at it for a while. I've got to look at it. Look at it and remember it. Remember, out of sight, out of mind. So, uh, that's really, literally something with ADHD. Out of sight, out of mind? Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> back to my story. Uh, so yeah, my PA and the VA through the Walla Walla VA system sent me for genetic testing. They set it all up. I had to drive up from Baker City because uh, I was living in Baker City. And then I went to the Walla Walla Hospital system. And I went to the HUD VASH program because I was only 90%. I wasn't able to make a living off of just 90% disability. I was only getting like basically what people give on Social Security as a civilian, honestly, as a set fixed income. And it's just not enough to live on. It's just not. But the income requirements for Section 8 housing is ridiculous. I make too much money for Section 8 on 90% VA disability, except for two places. Bend, Oregon has a higher threshold limit for Section 8, and Walla Walla, Washington. Go figure. I was too scared to move to Bend because I was already in the process of all my diagnoses when I was with the Walla Walla VA system, so I really didn't want to uproot myself and move to Bend, even though I really did. I really love Bend, Oregon. I would love to live there. Uh, it's beautiful. The rock hounding out there is amazing. And I really wished I I went to Bend, but I couldn't medically. I, I needed the help. I had to get diagnosed. And so I made the choice to move to Walla Walla because I did not know if the VA in Bend was going to be helpful at all. Because what I learned from Salem Portland VA is they're not helpful. And then Walla Walla VA in Washington were so helpful, I was just like blown away. I was so blown away with how much help the suction the housing the help with uh, with uh, the psychiatrist being able to help me after I freaking fought teeth and nail to stab my Adderall because my Salem Portland VA doctor had no problem prescribing it. I haven't did my PA in the uh, Baker City, but as soon as I changed providers from Baker City up to Walla Walla, Washington, because I'm like, there's no point in keeping that doctor as I already enrolled in the Walla Walla VA system. And just so happened that my parents' previous doctor, Dr. Kuzma, in Kaiser, Oregon, he moved from working in this private sector. Dr. Kuzma decided to work for the VA in Walla Walla, Washington. So, hey, oh my gosh, he already knew my parents. So, it seemed like a no-brainer to me. I'm like, I need a doctor that knows my family medical history. And since he's already treated my parents, why don't I just go ahead and keep him as a doctor? Get him as a doctor. So, I did that. And things were working great. He referred me. He worked with me for a while. Um, and he 
essentially homeless after my job ended. Um, I mean, if you don't pay for rent and have signed a contract or a lease with somebody, you're considered homeless officially. I did have a place to stay a roof over my head. My parents will never let me on the, stay on the streets unless they're gone. Um, but as long as they're alive, they will not allow me to be homeless and on the streets. I, I can't afford to live on my own though, and so I need to figure out something before they pass because I need to have stability and a home that is mine, or at least renting or something before they pass because I need to have some kind of stability where I live because they're not going to live forever. I know, I'm being realistic here without being emotional. <laughs> kind of, I can cut, try, I've turned off my emotional brain for right now. Uh, I'm masking it away for right, right now. Um, I love telling this story. And I love talking my facts and my experiences about my life that I've uh, had to deal with and what I've had to go through with just getting my 100% service connection disability. It took me 10 years. So, to move on with my story, um, I got my ADS diagnosis, I got my POTS diagnosis, I got all the referrals. I worked with the community care system team. Out of Walla Walla, I have, um, I still have the papers. <laughs> a lot of the names are no longer good because of the high turnover rate with the VA people at work. And then they also change positions and move people around uh, in the community care team. Uh, but they know me by name. I know a lot of them by name still, some of them. And the Richland Clinic, where I'm going to Friday and tomorrow for my new VA doctor, is part of the Walla Walla VA system. However, they, the Walla Walla, or all VA systems have a major hospital. They have one hospital for emergency care for veterans, and then they have what they call um, local clinics. Now they have way lots of local clinics in lots of different towns and cities and stuff. The lower population of veterans, they didn't have as many clinics on the eastern side of the state. Um, so that's why the Walla Walla VA system covers like the northeast part of Oregon, where there's hardly any, uh, it's all rural and a lot of farmland and uh, ranch cattle out there. Um, it's really deserty on the eastern side of Oregon. Uh, then you've got the Cascade Mountains and the uh, left part of the state toward the coastline so you kind of the rest on the eastern side of the mountains is like all like great volcanoes and like desert juniper trees up the butt and uh, tumbleweeds I oh man so when I lived in Walla Walla Washington in my studio I ended up while I was doing all this stuff with my diagnosis is getting diagnosed I was driving so all my community care was in Portland I used to drive, I'd get my VA doctor, my Walla Walla doctor, just put in a request for community care because it was almost automatically always granted right away because they don't have all the specialties within the VA system because it's more rural out there, so it's not as big of a VA population, so it's not as big of a hospital system with all the different specialties. Um, they just don't got it, so it's easier to get community care service out there because it's because they don't have it they just don't have it so I can hit hand pick any doctor I wanted to anywhere I wanted anywhere and so since the majority of everybody lives in Portland you know there's a Portland VA system I chose to stay in Walla Walla because one the section 8 housing until I got my 100% and that took it I took two years. I lived in Walla Walla for a total of three years. So for a total of two years straight, I drove 300, it was 300 miles exactly, my house to my parents' house. And my parents lived 60 miles southish of Portland, Oregon. So of course when I go to my doctor appointments in Portland, I'm not going to just drive from Walla Walla to Portland and back to Walla Walla. That's 600 miles round trip. I'm not doing that. I'm going to go to my appointment. Well, I'm going to go to my parents' house, get a good night's rest, and then go to my appointment with the community provider. Uh, any doctor I choose that accepts VA for insurance, uh, which is the majority of them, more so than my Medicare insurance covers. So I used to drive 
this house as long as I need to. Sometimes I would line up my appointments back to back, so I'd be at my parents' house for like two weeks straight, and then I'd go back to my studio apartment. Sometimes I'd be gone from my apartment for like months at a time, and I had to have my neighbor that I was really, really good friends with. Um, I had to have him go check things out and do things for me while I was gone. I'd water my plants or, you know, this or that, and do stuff with my computer system. Uh, you know, I gave him the key to my apartment. I trusted my neighbor. Like, we were basically almost roommates because my studio apartment, there were three studio apartments right next to each other and a house. So these three studio apartments were um, just basically extra bedrooms built on after the fact in the house. But each apartment had had her own bathroom and shower um, which was great it was amazing uh, so but the walls are super thin and it's just like living in a freaking apartment building for the most part but it was a house and we had a yard a front yard a gated yard um, I had my cat at the time so my cat was traveling the 600 miles all the time and her up until basically the day she died a lot of the time So anyways, continuing, continuing on my story, uh, yeah, 600 miles round trip, just to go to doctor appointments, just to hand pick my doctors, just to get my tethered cord surgery, and I used to talk to uh, the, the community care me team members all the time. I used to hang out in the VA. I used to go to the VA hospital, because it was only a couple blocks from my house, I used to hang out there, I used to go BS with my social worker, my hud vash social worker. He was a great, he was great to talk to. I loved talking to him. He's an intelligent man, good looking. Uh, <laughs> it looked just like George Clooney, like, oh my gosh, but better looking. <laughs> a little bit longer of hair, too. Like, mm. <laughs> he was a good looking guy, but then he uh, got a better job within the VA and moved up and moved up in his uh, job title and moved on to bigger and better things and he used to teach uh, Tai Chi to all the veterans for uh, veteran community stuff and they had programs that were great in Walla Walla for the veterans like I loved Walla Walla I loved their veteran community I loved hanging out at the hospital I loved talking to other veterans it was just a, it was fun I used to just go sit in I even went into the mental health clinic all the time and I, and I would just even though it wasn't required it was free, and I could I can attend it if I wanted to, but it wasn't. There's a lot of people that are all required to go to those meetings. Anger, anger management. And I actually did my cognitive behavior therapy there, and I got to know some of the other veterans in the community, and uh, it was nice. It was really nice. And then, and then COVID happened, shut all of that stuff down, and then the VA was never the same again. They got more strict. My psychiatrist retired without telling me and without the VA telling me that I need to sign up for a new doctor if we're in person until after the fact. Like, after the fact. And it was just stupid. It was stupid how things changed with COVID with the VA. And I was no longer really welcome in the VA hospital. It, they didn't have the classes. They didn't have all the stuff. They have all the stuff that you can do on the tablet now. They gave me a tablet. But the tablet had, like, so much restrictions, I ended up not using it. I have it in storage somewhere. <sighs> and then they've been asking for it back, and I don't know where it is. <laughs> I don't know where it is. So, um, yeah, that was my life for a good three years until I got my tethered cord surgery, and I ended up moving back in with my parents because the VA just went downhill. My, v my Dr. Kuzma, my primary care doctor at the VA there, at the, ho the Walla Walla Hospital, he, he essentially fired me because he too also accused me of being a drug seeker. It's like, come on guys, I was on opioids for a reason and that was because I needed tethered cord surgery and then I finally flip and got it. I finally flip and got it and then I retethered three months after the fact and I was still with that doctor and he was just, he was detrimental to my health because of COVID because I got my tethered cord surgery right at the very beginning of COVID in 2020. And the good news is in 2020, I got my 100% VA disability. So I had no longer really had a purpose to stay in Walla Walla. 
I just did not see a purpose, except for I needed to keep them as my insurance until I had to re-enroll because my enrollment expired and I haven't used them for so long because, you know, this, this was in 2020. There's been now four years since this happened. And so uh, I, I moved out of Walla Walla at some point. I just, I, I had to leave. Uh, they were no longer serving their purpose for me. My, do my doctor fired me. And then he referred me to a community provider and I was able to get that provider in the ha town I lived in <sighs> until 2023. They shut that clinic down and that all those doctors no longer work there. And then all they were doing at that clinic now, veteran exams. And so what that means is they basically have just one doctor in that clinic and then they have doctors rent that space to do these exams that are usually biased, that are usually on the VA side because they have to follow VA policy, otherwise they will get in trouble for awarding some, you know, the evidence to the VA. And so, uh, they, they were rigged. They were certain, the veteran exams are rigged. They really are. And some of them were good and some of them were horribly bad. Stormy, you wait. I know we're there. Stormy, lay down. <laughs> um, so, anyways, it just it it was a it was a mess because of COVID. And then my doctor fired me, and then I had a doctor for a brief while, and then he up and left too. And so, if I'm not being fired by my doctor. They're up and leaving basically and I have major PTSD about abandonment issues because and I have abandonment issues from my childhood too so I mean it's just it's just part of the thing it's part of the thing and so knowing all of this I, I, I moved back in with my parents to where they live now and uh, I don't repeat myself I got hung up with the PTSD stuff <laughs> Those feelings come back even sometimes when I'm talking about it. Um, as much as I have my boundaries up and my masking on, I, it's hard for my feelings to be completely okay sometimes, uh, especially on the lack of sleep. But anyways, so I was kind of left without a provider again. And I was just like, I, I gave up. I, I just gave up trying to go to doctors. And you know what? My mental health was actually the best it's ever been. <laughs> I didn't have pain meds messing with me. I wasn't really on anything. Even though I retethered, like, my pain was really minimal compared to now. Um, it's just things have progressed so much since I have symptoms again and since my fall in December. Um, but yeah, that's what I went through for a while. Three years of my life and COVID and my surgery happened at the same time and my 100% disability happened at the same time. It was, 2020 was a big year for me. It, like a lot of change, a lot of differences. Um, and then yeah, I was without a doctor for a while and then I, and that's when I decided, when I was without a doctor, that's when I wanted, that's when I went for my social security disability. So it's not like I wasn't doing, actively doing something to try and help myself at, at all times. Um, I took a little bit of a break though. I just, I could not talk about anything medically because I was still kind of triggered. Like I had all, I had all my doctors and then all of a sudden I had no more doctors. Um, and so my health wasn't like getting any better. Um, but I needed my social security disability. So I, I went on with that and uh, I got that after like a year and a half, two years. It took me to get my social security disability. It took three years from the moment we tried to start. And I think we started in 2020 or 2021. I had, I had a relatively decent back pay because they, they denied me and denied me and denied me. Because mostly because of my age. I, 100% I know it's because of my age. But at least I had so much medical records. Like I had such a paper trail. Uh, by the time I went and saw that judge and my lawyer helped me, um, the judge that I got was a good one. And once my uh, once my lawyer saw who the judge was, he's like, you're gonna get it. It won't take very long. And so I wasn't too traumatized by my trial. I 
I was really I was really anxious still because I, I'm used to how the VA makes their decisions on the freaking disability so I was, I was kind of prepared for that kind of thing because I've already de fought the VA and gone to trial with the VA which I'm waiting to go back to trial with them because 2023 they decided after they awarded it after 10 years of fighting for Chiari malformation that put me at 100% disability once I got awarded my Chiari three years after the fact they decided nah we don't want you to have Chiari as a service connection disability we, we disagree with the decision again like really you changed your mind after 10 years of you saying no and then yes and then two years later you're like no no a big this up their butts is all I gotta say <laughs> up their butts <laughs> I'm still fighting though I'm still waiting for the judge because I have to go back to court again to talk to the judge and tell him my story and it's all because at a different veteran examination, it was for a dentist. He wrote down some words, word for word that I said that I, because I was saying that my tethered cord surgery helped my pain. That was 100% the reason why they decided no. Even though I still have Chiari, even though my symptoms changed, that damn veteran examiner screwed me over. He didn't believe I had TMJ to begin with. And then they also denied my TMJ even though they approved the Chiari. It's stupid. I had it documented in my record that I have TMJ. Like, why? Why did this veteran examinator say, no, she didn't have it? It was already documented that I did. Why is this dentist veteran examiner, which I saw two times, two times the same guy, he is the one that screwed me over. I'm so mad about it. That's why I'm like, screw veteran examiners. Screw them. This is Diary of a Disgruntled Disabled Veteran today. This is why I have such PTSD with the VA. <laughs> because of this crap, man. How could you not have any kind of freaking anxiety trauma from that? Seriously. Like 10 years and having to drive 600 miles over and over again. Having surgery. After being called psychosomatic. Being called bipolar. After my, this is what got written in my record from my, doc, my last VA doctor, Dr. Kuzma, that fired me. Yeah, he called me psychosomatic. Uh, he said I was basically just crazy. I was bipolar. They didn't, my psychiatrist never really had an interest in my autism or like getting that diagnosed or anything. Uh, I fought her tooth and nail for my Adderall. Um, you know, and then I had to have her communicate with one of my other doctors that fought hard for me. Thank you, Dr. Guggenheim at OHSU in Portland, Oregon, who is an EDS specialist that has EDS herself, who is a naturopathic doctor that works in the pain management clinic. And she knows EDS more than any other doctor on the West Coast. And she has a five-year wait limit, right? Wait list right now. Which I need that referral for her to help me get my tethered cord surgery so I can get her opinion about where I can go. And I'm gonna get a new MRI through the VA. That way I can take all the new information to Dr. Guggenheim. But since I haven't seen her for over two years, I am no longer a patient. So I have to maybe get back on that five-year wait list. That's okay. I will see if my doctor will uh, do what it takes because I, I'm armed with knowledge. I'll just get back on the wait list for Dr. Guggenheim again. Because who knows what's going to happen in the future between now and then. So I may need her. I always want to have her as a part of my care team. Whether I see her or not, I need to make sure to have appointments with her once in a while. And it's hard to get the authorization process going because it takes the VA forever because they don't communicate very properly. And then the OHSU likes to screw up and send it to the Portland VA instead because they're right next door to the location of where OHSU and the Portland hospital, VA hospital are located. They're neighbors. OHSU and Portland VA work together a lot of the time. So I can understand and see the mistake why it happens, but still, when I give them the information on a platter and I tell the billing people where they need to send it to, and then they continuously make the same mistake over and over again until I start having a mental breakdown because I'm yelling at 
people in the office like what the F why are you effing this up so much well it doesn't really matter who it gets billed to they'll pay it that's how OHSU sees it and one VA system says it's okay and the other VA system says no it needs to come out of the correct budget because that's fraudulent if it's coming out of the wrong budget because I am not enrolled in that VA system so this is what's wrong with the VA they're doing fraudulent things it's stupid I need to actually call my friend in the Carolinas, my VA veteran sister in the Carolinas, and see how her case is going against the VA because she was fired by the VA as a certified nurse, a CNA. She got fired for uh, some accusations that weren't true. And yeah, she's trying to fight him in court, and I hope she wins. I think she's got a good lawyer, and she had to use her freaking... Social Security. She had to. She she got like a big lump sum from something. I can't remember what it was from. Um, but she had to use all that money to, to retain a lawyer. Now, <laughs> she was actually going to come out on vacation and come visit me, and we had everything all planned out what we were going to do. And then all of a sudden, I didn't hear from her, and I saw a post on Facebook, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. She can't even post about it. She had to tell me about it, and we had like a three-hour conversation about what the hell was going on. So anyways, uh, yeah, VAs are not created equal. There's a lot of corruption still in VA systems all over the United States. Um, I also learned from the community care team in Walla Walla that the um, reason why they started cracking down on opioids in the uh, Walla Walla and Pacific regional area is because uh, there was a new head honcho trying to make a name for themselves. So they were trying to just, look how many veterans I got off opioids, look at the numbers, look at our statistics, we did great, good, pat on our backs, we got all these veterans off opioids, yay, we're going to cut down on drug overdoses with veterans, yay, 22 veterans a day commit the unthinkable and don't want to deal with it anymore at all, period, ever again, in their entire life, because they won't have one anymore, um, yeah. So, knowing all the things, the inside information from people that work directly in the VA hospital and the system, hearing these things really disheartens me because these people actually really care that are telling me the information. They care. They actually want to help veterans. These people do. Some of the employees really do want to help and they care. And then they end up telling me a little bit too much about what's going on with the corruption stuff and the things that they're doing policy-wise that are unhelpful for veterans and it really inhibits the process for us veterans. I'm learning about it because these employees get comfortable talking to me because they talk to me all the time and uh, you know, I'm just a very transparent, honest person and I tell them, how to tell them it like it is. And I, I'm not afraid to stand up for myself and I will definitely say, F you if I'm freaking triggered enough. <laughs> and I will flip out on freaking people around me and I'm very dramatic about it. <laughs> Thank you, ADHD being a narrow spicy. Thank you. So that would be the reason. Anywho. Uh I need to get out of here and get stormy playing so we can be ready for a long car ride today and I can try to figure out a grooming appointment for her before we leave because I am not going to do it myself. I just can't. I will throw my back out and I cannot do that on this long drive. I am already going to be in enough pain from a long drive. I've been sitting for too long. So I'm not going to make myself be in more pain if I don't have to be. And my inflammation level is low right now so I kind of am scared to move too much too because I'm afraid I'm going to throw myself out really easy because I adjusted very very easy very easy I went into place so easy it scared us that's why I stopped getting adjusted I I, I didn't even have him adjust everything because I was too scared because it'll just come right back out otherwise so I'm like let's have a little bit of tension still let's leave a little, one or two things out of place that's not interrupting my digestion and that's all that matters right now have to leave my neck feeling the way it is 
because I need to have some kind of stability. And this is probably the most aligned that I should stay because otherwise, if I put everything back in, and it's bound to come out regardless, but I feel like I have a little bit better luck leaving at least one or two things slightly out, having a little bit of tension to keep me a little bit more stable. Even if it's in the wrong spot, it's the right spot for the moment. <laughs> That's all that matters. That's why I'm like so scared to move and I'm so scared to do this. <laughs> So that's the one thing I can't stand is people being in fear of the body. I cannot be scared of my body. My body's always trying to heal. I have to have faith in my body. And I'm trying to give it a chance to do the right thing. Sorry for the pause. Um, Stormy's just getting a little anxious and I know I'm gonna get out in a second. I just wanted to finish up. I wanted to wrap this up nicely in a good presentation manner. Um, the linear flow of my story is really good today uh, compared to some other days where I'm just kind of brain fog and just either repeat myself and say the same thing in a different way and just keep going with that for about a half hour or so. <laughs> but yeah, I really just wanted to talk about my story again. It's been a while. I've already talked about it a little bit, maybe the entire story before on my previous videos. I have over 300 videos. I don't expect any of my new people to go back and watch all of them. Uh, so now that I have a little bit more of an audience, I wanted to retell my story, um, and reaffirm myself. Everything will be okay because I'm doing everything right. I am going to ask for the MRI. I'm going to start the workup with my new VA doctor. It's a fresh start. It's a fresh doctor. Now that my primary care doctor and Medicare is trying to fire me too. So, you know. I only lasted a year with this doctor. It's so sad. It's so sad that all these doctors don't have faith in being able to help me because when I'm triggered and upset and yelling at them, they really don't feel like they're doing any good. They're, they think they're actually doing a bad job. It really, they just have to understand what PTSD is and how they can help mitigate more triggers by not abandoning me as part of the issue. So... I did tell him that in that appointment, that, that not a, that it was a trigger, but I, I did whine about that. That was part of my trigger is I was telling him all about what was going on and why I think the way I do. Um, so it, it's time for a good change. It's a time for a fresh start since I am kind of spinning my wheels with Medicare. Um, the doctor's kind of right. like. Even though I was triggered that day, I couldn't handle that information that day. That day was not a good day to present that information to me, even though I can now process it without the emotions attached to my PTSD and my triggers. I am not triggered as much now. I can actually think about it logically and be like, okay, yeah, I see where my doctor's coming from that day. I see it. I get it. I, I, I know why he responded the way he did. However, I almost feel like I feel like why I feel like all of our healthcare providers need to have some kind of training in PTSD trigger management with patients. I really, really think this needs to be a thing. I really would love to push my legislate legislators with it. I, I just need to find somebody in the government that cares passionately about veterans. And so I do need to try and reach out at some point in between all the mess of everything else, like fighting the VA, getting my surgery, and getting my MRI, and just trying to manage everyday life and pain on a, and symptoms on a daily daily basis that change hour by hour sometimes. Um, every day is a new day. Every hour and every minute is a new minute to rethink and rewire my brain and think differently and think happy about things. I, at any point I can view things however I want to and I'm not always capable of doing that if I'm triggered or my anxiety level is really high or my pain level is high. And yeah, my doctor was right when he said that pain does cause anxiety and I do have higher anxiety at more than the average, but it's because of my experiences and I communicated that throughout my crime and triggeredness. I did, I, did, I did effectively communicate, but not in the right tone. It, it was just not my day in that tone. Uh, but I need to stand up and get out of here. Um, 
because my ribs and back feel uh, icky. Um, so I need to get out and stand up and stretch and move things around and get going and get my day going. I need to get to Yakima today. I need to get to Washington. It's already 9 a.m. and I might be losing out on a walking appointment at the groomers if I don't get going. So I need to get Stormy Gore out and get her breathing hard before I get home so I can ignore her for a little bit while she's trying to catch her breath because it takes her forever. After we get home, she's still panting for like a good hour after I get home. <sighs> Poor thing. She like just can't catch her breath because I wear her out. And she won't stop. She won't stop. She just still wants to play. Even when we get home, I'm like, no. You need to calm down, girl. <laughs> she's only three, but still, she, she should know by now. Man. But I'm going to go. I got to get out of here. I gotta get my day going. Thank you so much for listening and sticking around for my story if you did till the end. Thank you. Welcome new subscribers. Uh, welcome new viewers that even if you aren't subscribing, I don't expect you to. I would love it if you do, but it's not expected. It's just not expected. I got my required 500 now, so you know, I'm happy. You know, what, anything over 500 is a bonus to me. I can't wait till I get to a thousand though because the, the opportunity to monetize is even better. My only goal is to reach the 3,000 watch hours within the, by December. And if I continue making a good video here and there, I might make it. And it has to be done within 365 days, so that's why I have a time limit of having my watch hours up there to 3,000. I don't know if I'm close to halfway there yet or not. I have to. I didn't, I didn't really look at that last night when I was having my insomnia. I was trying everything in my power to procrastinate going to sleep because I was in so much pain. But I was worried about today, so I'm actually really calm today. I feel good. I'm not as inflamed. Um, I feel good with my decision now about not talking about the MRI with my new doctor, uh, about having one already. Um, it takes the pressure off me trying to deal with the paperwork before I leave today and I don't have to pack it now. So, uh, there are a couple things I do need to prepare on my paperwork. I do need to prepare, um, the relevant information of my medications, who prescribes them and what my dosage is. That's the most important thing is having that listed out and that's all that matters. Um, and hopefully I can get the VA to start covering those medications here pretty soon. So I may, I may just change doctors through my Medicare. Uh, I'm going to have to talk to a Medicare representative. Like I said that earlier in one of my videos yesterday probably, you know, I'm going to try and figure out with open enrollment coming up soon. I'm going to try and get a doctor that the VA will accept by, as a primary. So, well, not that I'm, I'm going to change my primary from a VA primary to a community care primary, but for my Medicare purposes, I need to have Medicare and VA eligible because I need that primary care doctor to prescribe the VA prescriptions. And it has to be a VA provider, uh, VA recommended provider, I guess, in order to get that. So, uh, or the VA provider, you know, one or the other, one of the two have to be able to uh, prescribe medications for me so the VA can pay for it. However I can get it to work, I'm gonna make it work for me. I can't afford these co pays anymore. It's just killing my pocketbook, and I need this debt paid off. And I want to enjoy my life. I want to have money to live on, and not be broke all the time like I am. Uh, I'm making serious steps in paying my debt off. I'm doing a good job so far. I paid too much this month, but yeah. As long as I have gas money to get to my appointments, that's all, all that I care about this month. I mean, everything else is extra, and I just don't think I'm going to have the money to do anything extra this month. It sucks. That's why I'm going to try and work the first week of September for the dude harvesting stuff, because he always needs people to work to do that stuff uh, for the big harvest for his outdoor stuff. Uh, and his indoor, so uh, yeah. He doesn't do it all himself, that's for sure, because he has a lot of patients that he grows for. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to work my little bit for one week straight, and I'm going to go fishing that same week. So I'm not going to be able to work the whole time, but at least I'll have like five, six days worth of work and a little bit of extra cash. And I'm going to try and go to the pier before it ends. 
which it ends on Labor Day. Wait, that I'm going to be working right after the fair ends. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm going to try and save a little bit of money for the fair so I can go just to have a little bit of fun uh, this month because. It feels weird not going to the county fair. I didn't go to the county fair this year, and I've gone the last two years in a row. So I missed the county fair, and uh, I don't want to miss the state fair, too, this year. I gotta go to the one fairs, man. I like fairs and fests. Uh, so I gotta go. Almost an hour video today. Wow. What can I say? I need to talk about this stuff and uh, prioritize what I need to do today, and... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really not anxious about my appointment anymore. My PTSD has kind of like calmed down. My, my head is coming back from not, from the steroids. Uh, it's amazing, it's so amazing. I'm so glad to be back to myself. Oh gosh, the steroids really messed with my head so bad. That was the worst, those are the worst side effects I felt ever. You know, this patch and steroids, I don't think it's a combination I ever want to do ever again. I want off this patch bad. <laughs> if I ever go on steroids again. Which I need to avoid unless I get sick. Unless it's serious. I'm not going to take them. So, anyways, I'm going to have a fantastic safe trip today. I'm going to try and listen to music really loud maybe. And just enjoy my drive instead of doing these dash cams. I, I did a long one. Instead of four posts, I'm doing one today. So, four posts into one. An hour long today. Instead of like four 20 minute videos like yesterday. So... Y'all have a fantastic day and a fantastic week if I don't do any more. Uh, I'm going to try and post this when I get home and do my research and get the rumor stuff done. So I love you all. Keep smiling. Never give up. Tell those that you love that you love them because you never know how much longer you have left with them. Anything can happen. Accidents happen. Things happen. You never know what to expect. Life, can, life happens. And the ending of it happens too and you just never know so tell everybody you love them before it's too late you don't want it to be too late bye guys enjoy your day much love thank you